you know. <laughs> This is Stephanie, and this is the Mocha Minutes Podcast. Hey guys, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to let you know about something that's a little new here at the Mocha Minutes Podcast. We are now participating in Buy Me a Coffee. So, If you haven't heard, buymeacoffee.com is a place where you can show some um, support and some love monetarily to some of your favorite content creators. That includes me. (laughs) Um, So it's in the increments of either a dollar, three dollars or five dollars. And you can do as many as you would like. Um, So I just wanted to let you guys know would love, love, love some support. So if you would go to buy me a coffee.com backslash mocha minutes. I would greatly appreciate it. It will also be in the show notes. Okay, here we go. I could stay home every night. Wait around for Mr. Right. Take cold showers every day. And throw my life away on a dream that won't come true. I could hurt someone like me out of spite or jealousy. I don't steal and I don't lie, but I can feel and I can cry. A fact I bet you never knew, but to cry in front of you, that's the worst thing I could do. Hello, welcome to the Mocha Minutes Podcast. This is Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining me. As Stephanie goes through her earworms that are full of problematic musicals like Grease. Although um, Rizzo is one of my favorite characters in theater. As long as she's <laughs> not one of them damn cats. Okay. I, I need some, I, I sound like Sarah. Um, I need someone to explain why cats. It seems like a terrible idea. It was a terrible movie, allegedly. I haven't seen it. I've never seen the play. I don't understand it, but it's not, you know, Grease. Problematic as hell, but I so enjoy that song as well. Sometimes that's, there are worse things I could do. But crying in, um, in front of an ain't shit nigga, nope, won't do it. There are worse things. I would mop the ocean before I cry in front of somebody who is extremely ancient. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> y'all, I will tell y'all, we have not finished the conversation series on therapy is for everybody. Um, it is an evergreen topic. So it's going to take a little bit more time. But, 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 today is the last day of November, meaning that it will be December soon. But for all of you guys who know about, um, the zodiacs and the, the the suns and the risings and the moons and the Venus and the Mercury and girl and the seven houses. I don't know what the hell that means. Um, y'all should know that we are in the thick of Sagittarius season. Mm. And so tomorrow starts the beginning of my favorite part of the Sagittarius season. The December Sagittarius, it's December Sag season for me. And one of my favorite December Sages is, is here. Y'all know I love her. Y'all know I love her. <laughs> I fuck with her the long way, the short way, the diagonal way, um, the vertical way, any way that y'all think about. But I have my girl Cook, aka my mother's five, six, seventh child. Um, <laughs> I had to think. I'm like, wait a minute. Me, Steven. Hold up. What? <laughs> I had to think, I had to think, I had to think of like six, wait, 
wait, no, no, seven. I have cooked from the highly oh. inappropriate podcast, aka um that one of the 18 rooms in my heart. She is in there. Um, so that's where she is. <laughs> so cook, how are who how art thou? Because y'all, it's the birthday mm-hmm. bitch's uh birthday this week. Yes. Come on, birthday is. bitch. Come on, birthday bitch. Don't call her no bitch. I get to do that. You do not. Do not call her no bitch. They can call Thank me you birthday so much. nigga. Thank come you. Come on. Come on. Okay, unless you unless you're not black and then you can't do that. It is a don't. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. But you are more than welcome to call me birthday nigga. Mm. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> unless you, excuse me, Danny Lay. That does not include you. Honey, yellow bone is not what you like because black eye will be what you like. <laughs> She's not invited. I'm not, She's not told you. anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> anywhere. I'm just oh, saying. How hello. Are, hello. How are you? How are you? I am fine. How are you? <laughs> Sound like a Dr. Seuss play. Um, I am good. I'm out of my funk. I don't know. See, I'm here for this. I'm here for you being out of your funk. I'm here for you being back to the world. I'm just here, okay? And I'm I'm here for it. All right. And whatever you're selling, I'm buying. Okay. And And, and, you know, I was three steps away from selling coochie, so you know. Oh my gosh, listen. If you are not three steps away or one toe in, are you? I even mean, living life? yeah, two toe. I mean, hello. It's like it's. Hey, are you I feel even like living? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm like, girl, I'm like three steps away from selling coochie. Wait, what, girl? I'm only one step away. How you get three? <laughs> 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 like, uh, how y'all? I'm like, look. I feel like everybody at least is like one to three steps away from selling ass on a daily. Oh, listen, I think about it. I mean, I don't think I'm any steps away from it. I just think about it. <laughs> I ain't even gonna hold you. I'm just saying. I'm like, are you kidding me? He's like, I have to wear a mask. Be on the OnlyFans. You know, you're. So we love the OnlyFans and masks. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we love that. See, I'm just saying. I'm like, you know, I'm like, no judgment, y'all. Ho is life. I have sex work is work. A low Sex job is a job. <laughs> it really is a job. I'm just saying. It's just like, you know, it's, it's work. Work, work, work. Mm-hmm. Look, I ain't going to hold y'all. Um, but I'm so excited that Cook is here. Let, let's play, you know, Thanksgiving is over. Um, let me just say this. For all those folks going, oh my God, you're eating Thanksgiving leftovers on Saturday. Um, then y'all can just throw away every single one of those meal prep recipes y'all got when y'all put out five different little trays. For stuff you're gonna eat for the next day so basically on friday you eating six day old food but you know there's neither here nor there now is it <laughs> but y'all were talking about, oh y'all need to throw it away why are you eating them stale ass unflavored vegetables on friday that you made on sunday isn't that six day oh, oh okay i just wanted to make sure see yeah don't listen to those people that do that because i throw it away i'm like oh i'm sorry are you going to feed them after you can just worry about what's going on in your fridge, okay? Hilarious. Just, just leave people alone, for real. So let's play, am I the asshole? <laughs> okay, I, look, I'm, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. For eating McDonald's day before Thanksgiving. I don't understand this. Some of you just go, wait, what? It's the day before. So, <clears throat> so my aunt and her kids are staying at my house for Thanksgiving because they live far away from us. Okay. Anyways, today what I was going to go get McDonald's. So I asked everyone if they wanted anything. My aunt looked at me with disgust. Hmm, okay. She asked me if I was serious. I didn't understand what the problem was. So I go, yes. She asked me why I would even bring up McDonald's the day before Thanksgiving. I was confused and asked what the problem with McDonald's was. She told me she always fasts her kids the day before Thanksgiving and that even offering them McDonald's was temptation and disrespectful to their beliefs. Mm. I said, sorry, because I never knew that she did that and left to go get McDonald's on my own. I came back to my house and ate in the, ate it in the kitchen. She saw me and told me she couldn't believe how disrespectful I was being and told me to eat in my room, 
I told her she's being ridiculous and I should be able to eat at my own table. She told my mom I was being rude and back back talking her. Oh my. And told me that she didn't <laughs> want me to eat around her or her kids at Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow because my bad influence is rub, 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 running off on them. I think she meant rubbing, but running oh. off on them. Uh, <sighs> this was the day before, right? We're talking the, the day, day before. before. So apparently she fasted the day, like her and her family fasted the day before, which I feel like I've heard people who do that, who like mm-hmm. maybe like fast, maybe starting like that afternoon and then don't. Okay. Because, <laughs> so, you know, collectively, I believe the black community fasts on Thanksgiving. I feel like they do. It's like- I feel like that. I feel like that is the best, really what we should be saying that we do. We're not y'all who just sits and starve until dinner time. No, we're fasting. Black communities, write that down. Write that down. <laughs> but so, <laughs> so, I, so I always like to look through to see if they have updates. So the original poster said, my mom didn't agree with her that I was being disrespectful, but she told me to just leave it alone. I feel like that's completely fair because um, I don't think you will have to worry about her next year. So, you know, fair. Hmm. It's like, that, that's fine because she's not coming back. I'm good. That's fine, but that's mm-hmm. how dare you disrespect me in your home? I wait, what? <laughs> like I could see if this was your house and you're back talking me in my home. You damn right, I'm talking. I'm talking back to you, front way, side to you, above you, and below you in my home. In my home that I pay for. It's like, girl, what are you? Are you? Oh Lord, Ooh, Ooh, some people. I, it's it's kind of like you want to go. Yes. Yes, she is. I have no idea, but I'm pretty sure it's yes. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> that is like some some hard some hardcore Rachel energy Ooh, there. Not even Rachel Carrot. It's like that is like that's a a a, a level book. Bu- is Rachel a level below above? I think it is. <laughs> it's like it's like the ultimate. It's like not the final form, but you know, the next level up. I've watched too much Digimon. I was trying to think. I'm like, I feel like he, you know, she evolved. Karen evolved is Rachel. Because girl, what? Because <laughs> girl, what? I, I don't even understand. Girl, what? It's, it's a lot of girl what for me. It's like, girl, you're not the asshole. But your asshole of an aunt will not be back. So that's fine. They could literally fast in a hotel room next year. Don't worry. Fast in your Airbnb. I'm pretty sure you could do that. People are <laughs> it's like fast there. Anyway, so let's start low key. This is not low key. It's actually, but let's start here. But rest in peace to Virgil Abloh. I yeah. literally was shocked by this. I was like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> so for everybody who doesn't know, um, Virgil Abloh is, was the artistic director for Louis Vuitton. And he found it off white and he died of cancer at 41, mm-hmm. uh, 41. And I'm like, I'll be 41 next year. Oh, good Lord. It's like, geez, Louis. he was 41. And so he passed away. Um, he was survived by his wife, Shannon, and he has two children. Um, his sister, Edwina, was also there. Um, and his parents were there and a few um, friends and colleagues. So he has been fighting cancer for the last two years. He has an, a, a rare, he had a rare aggressive form of cancer called cardiac angiosarcoma. Mm. He was diagnosed, diagnosed, diagnosed in 2019. So mm. he had been going very challenging treatments. So probably he was probably things that were... Um, probably not known, probably like new, brand new treatments. But if they're saying a rare and aggressive cancer, wow. So he was all over the place and he was still working through all of this. Um, And he was 41. So he was surrounded by friends and family. And so I think 
I don't know if you probably saw this too, where people were like, oh my God, he was suffering in silence. No, he wasn't. He just didn't publicly tell anybody. That doesn't mean he was suffering in silence. He didn't just tell your ass. Why? You didn't know. You didn't know. Because it's kind of like, I still remember last year when I think it was like the whole two, like keeping a hundred, it was keeping two Virgils. I'm like, okay, this is just way too funny. He was actively working. I think probably close friends like, you know, a Kanye West probably knew about his diagnosis. I don't think he just didn't tell anybody. He just didn't publicly say, hey, I have cancer. Because also Mm. it was the um, celebration of, I believe it would have been Chadwick Boseman's 45th birthday this week as well. Yeah. Oh, this. (sighs) Yeah. So that's a, that's a lot. So I, Rest in peace to a visionary. There, there's definitely a lot of outpouring of just love for uh, Virgil, um, one of a kind, and it, it's a it's a loss. It definitely is a loss. We can say everybody has their probably mixed feelings about him. Probably don't, but Virgil was a visionary. And yeah, it's, it's very very shocking. One that he passed away, and two he had cancer. So there's that. It's like, uh, so we go from having to say goodbye to Virgil, but also having peace after the malice at the palace. Come through, listen. After God 17 years. <laughs> God, wait. <laughs> Jesus fixed it. Because <laughs> I'm like, because the thing about it is, I was, I didn't remember what had happened because I was it was like I wasn't really watching basketball at the time so when the thing on Netflix you know the documentary series they had the mouse in the palace I finally watched it and went oh my oh this is just some some BS mm. <laughs> so to hear that um Ron Artest aka Meta World Peace aka Meta Sandiford Artest Oh my God. And Ben Wallace have made peace 17 years after malice in the palace. <sighs> this is from the Grio. I wow, I girl. 17 years ago, Detroit Pistons player Ben Wallace and Indiana Pacer Ron Artest, as he was known then, were on opposite sides of one of the biggest brawls in sports history. The malice in the palace, as the incident became known, was retold in the recent Netflix doc Untold. Yep, it was actually pretty good. On November 19, 2004, the Indiana Pacers and the Detroit Pistons squared up, squared up for an early season game at Detroit's mm. Palace at Arborn Hills. Hmm. The Pacers were on track to have a winning season that could possibly bring Reggie Miller, oh Reggie, his first championship in his final year in the league. Inside, a brawl ensued with 45.9 seconds left in the game after Pistons center Ben Wallace was fou- fouled hard by Arte- Ron Artest. Wallace precipitated a fight between teams after he shoved Artest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh God, that should have been the end of it. But as Artest laid out on the s- scores table to await the foul call, a fan later identified as John Green threw a soda that landed squarely on Artest. He charged into the stands along P- Pacers players, Jermaine O'Neal and Steven Jackson. And the situation turned ugly as fans and players fought with each other in several separate incidents. As Malice in the Palace documents, the repercussions of the fight impacted all of the key participants' careers. Artest received the longest suspension in NBA history at 86 games, and eight other players, including O'Neal, Wallace, Miller, and Jackson, were all suspended, ranging from 30 games for Jackson, 15 for O'Neal, and one game apiece for Miller and others. Time, Ooh. Time has <laughs> mellowed the personalities involved. Wallace and Artest our tests were photographed together at a Lakers Pistons game in Los Angeles recently. Recently, our mm-hmm. test, who is now Meta Sandiford, our what is Sandiford for? Was what? A- <laughs> I was like, what is Sandiford <laughs> for? Because he's hyping it. Sandiford, our test. I'm like, Ooh. I, you know what? I don't hate it. I don't either. I'm just like, wait, did, is that your, what? Did you marry some? Okay. Was All Smiles posting a pic of the two on his Instagram? Because he posted this picture. This duo would be any duos. Rule the 2000s on defense. It's not debatable. That's, oh, he's, oh, I'm sorry. He kind of fine. Okay. Wait a minute. 
Nope. Not 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 Metal World Peace. I'm talking. <laughs> I'm talking about Ben Wallace. He is kind of funny. Ben Wallace. He must have pulled himself that gava. It's like mm-mm. I like I like the suit jacket. I like I like the salt and pepper bed. I don't know. I'm very into salt and pepper on a man's face. Mm. He looked kind of good. I like the skin. It looked like he'd been drinking some water. He looked kind of good. Like, okay. I'm here for it. I'm, I'm all here for it. But the fact that these men who, and he's a good looking guy. Ben Wallace is a good looking guy. Um, the fact that it's like 17 years later, it's like, lot child, we can move on. The fact that we're moving on is just good. I, I, I like, I like good endings it's like okay we can put this we can put this to bed good because we're not doing this no more good i need and i'm glad that they did that same i I need to know what the sander further for i'm not googling this y'all i know somebody who watched the shooty hoops aka uncle jay or uncle ricky or brandon it's somebody i know some dudes Cold sport, cold sport. I know you can tell me what the standard for this for. It's fine. I'm not Googling it because no, because I'm gonna go down why the hell he's still going by Meadow and why the world peace is off his name. Do you no longer want world? Okay, see, there I go. Let me get off of this. Okay, so let's slide into mid key. Last week or so, a young lady put up a um, Twitter thread about mm-hmm. a breakfast date that she had. Now she is in our age demographic, y'all. She mm-hmm. is in, she's in the 40 and up club like we are. Okay. So she started about this. Y'all, I had a breakfast date yesterday. I always go on first dates from apps, bare face and makeup free. This is me. Sidebar. <clears throat> I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go barefaced and make up free when I'm going out with my homegirls. Okay? Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I put on makeup for me. I don't. <laughs> Cook tell you. She's like, okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't think I've ever seen you barefaced and make up free uh-uh. for anything. Not that you be like, girl, fix your face. It's just, I just don't do it. Mm-hmm. Y'all. You I don't. always come with the beat. You always got saying. your to the gods, mm. to the gods. I'm just saying. <laughs> but if that's what you want to do, because people like to make them little jokes, first date, we're going to go to the pool. Why don't we go to the Home Depot so you can show me all the stuff that you can't fucking build because you don't know what the... Let me keep reading this thread of that before I go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> the date was uneventful. The guy's 44, handsome and smart. Black, engaged once, never married. He also talked wait for it, almost nonstop for 90 minutes. So I listened uh more than I talked. The date left me feeling unsettled, but I couldn't figure out why at first. He didn't do anything horrid or cringeworthy. In fact, he was nice and polite to me and wait staff and on time. But as the day wore on, my anxiety slowly and steadily rose and I found myself just worried. Excuse me. Though he was polite, he was also argumentative and knowledgeable about every damn thing there is to know. Oh boy. Here are some of the topics. She puts some, she puts some of some of in asterisks. <laughs> I got schooled on yesterday before noon. One, the black community is in shambles and there is no hope and nothing to celebrate. I asked several times for clarification, and yes, this is it. Hopeless. Look it up. Two. We are on the verge of total societal collapse, total. And when, quote unquote, the lights go out, the biggest problem will be that schools no longer teach cursive so the population can't read the founding founding documents. I can't do this today. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Not the founding documents. Why the fuck we gonna read that? We were property. Shut up. (laughs) Three, feminism. Four, the problem is that there are too many single people, but it's not a problem for everyone, just women, specifically women over 50. While he could get married like this, literally snapped his fingers, women can't once they're over 30 and begin to realize no one wants them. 4B, I hate her, 4B, (laughs) especially over 50. In fact, every woman he knows over 50 is finally learning, quote unquote, including his sister, and they're all 
on antidepressants in their houses with their cars and quote unquote careers, but no man and alone. And now he does welfare checks on the single women he knows over 50. Call the police. 4C. <laughs> 4C. Women are communal and need other people. That's why we have women friends. Okay. That's why so many of them are depressed once they hit 45 and are alone. There are no more people. That's a lie. <laughs> Men. That's a fucking lie. Girl. Men, however, are solitary creatures who don't need people. No, they need who women to cook it? their food. <laughs> This is from her date with this dude who's 44 and black and successful and handsome and nice to make uh. staff. Men, however, are solitary creatures who don't need people so they can be alone and happy. Girl, what? Women, just... <laughs> women can't look it up. 4D. I hate her for doing this. This is so great. These women will learn. His sister is, quote unquote, learning now. She's 50. He mentioned that. And when they learn, he plans to check notes, sit on his porch and get a drink and watch and laugh. Five, girl. Their system is rigged against men. Look it up. Oh, I know mm. he said this shit. More than 50% of domestic violence claims are fake. Girl, what? Domestic violence charges are a way for the oh. state to make men keep paying. It's a financial racket. Girl, what? How Five. do you pay for that domestic Girl, 5B. I hate it here. I hate it. 5B. In fact, some guy spent five years in prison for child support for a child that wasn't his. Look it up. Luckily for me, he sent me. <laughs> no, look it up. Look, look it up. I know. I, you know the bad part about this? I have been on dates with dudes who have told me to look it up. I know for a fact he said that shit. It's like, mm. girl, what? And Luckily they do from be wanting us to look that look shit it up. up. It's like, it girl, like... you look it up and send me the links, bitch. Luckily for me, he sent me the research. This is the research for a man with at least one advanced degree from an accredited school. He used a link from freebeerandhotwings.com. Girl, huh, I don't know. I wasn't ever, and it's a it's a video from paternity court. I don't know. I wasn't ever taught to use free beer and hot wings or paternity court as a credible source. Damn you, Michigan and Vanderbilt. Come on, bitch. You better you better talk this shit about Vanderbilt. Let me tell you something about paternity court. Paternity court is a national goddamn treasure. It okay. Is. Do you hear me? It, that is one of the best things to ever happen. To is television. it peer reviewed? No. Is it fucking I don't hilarious? Give oh, a yes. Damn. We don't care. Is it fake? Okay. It's has it been peer reviewed? It doesn't matter. Okay. Doesn't matter. It's it's great. It doesn't matter. It's entertainment. 5C. <laughs> Prenups are fake. Courts and judges ignore them all the time, but they only ignore them for men. What? So he'd mm. never get married unless there were children involved, but he wants a relationship. Girl. Six. The best thing is Best thing to do is buy land in a remote place in a southern state. With the white people, girl, what? Why? Because we're in the verge of total societal collapse. But luckily, he owns land in one of these states and can hunt and fish. So he'll be okay. He could recursive, girl. I her. Oh, he, she wrote six again. She meant 6A. 6A, we're on the verge of the government taking literally everything from every citizen. Even your TV, look it up. But we'll be happy about it because student loans. What? Six. B, the government is going to take all your money, all of it. Look it up because everyone is in debt because student loans. Except him. He has land and a retirement plan. So he plans to check notes, wait for it to happen so he can light a stogie and sit on his front porch and laugh. Hmm. Throughout the day, as I found myself persever persever perseverating on societal collapse, the fact that I neither hunt nor <laughs> fish, that I don't own a large swath of land in a southern state, that I'm 42 and only have at least five more years of sexy and desirable left before I turn into a toad. Mm. And that I encourage cursive to be stuck from ELA stand to be stuck from ELA, ELA standards, damning generations from their civil liberties. I realized there was really only really one thing left to do with this man's number. And she gave a, um, it's a gift of Maria Kondo throwing stuff away. He did oh. not bring me joy. So you might be wondering why I lasted so long. I mean, 90 minutes is a long time for that. One, breakfast was good. It took me a good hour to order, wait, and eat. Two, more dist disturbing is that the guy presented as totally harmless and normal. 
Disarming smile, charming, polite, and kind, spoke with authority. So there was a lot of cognitive dissonance happening. Very true. Like I knew, this is weird, this is weird, right? And at the same time, thought, <clears throat> but he's too nice to be this weird. Maybe he's not as disturbing as I think. Which is why space and reflection are powerful things. By 4 p.m. when I was still perseverating and journaling, I was like, that was very, very weird. When Feminista Jones starts her dating podcast, I like to be the first guest. LOL, if you read this far and you're a parent or teacher, read this next. When I'm not dating weirdos, I'm a literacy educator and most of my tweets are about reading and how to get children K through 12 to be better at it. If you enjoyed my tallish tale, if you've laughed or smiled, please take the energy and donate to at 826DC on this hashtag Given Tuesday, free to all students. They help young writers blossom and learn the power of the pen. Literally every dollar counts for our students. Now, the last thing I read was new because that was from um, today because today is Giving Tuesday. I always do it the Tuesday after Thanksgiving for different charities. So I read all of that because I have been on dates like this. Uh-huh. I have been on dates where it's like, he can't be this crazy or this weird, or I have really heard men talk like they know everything about being a woman. It's like, you're telling me like, this is what women need to do to get to man. I'm like, let me tell look, you know what? You should educate me. Tell me how you keep your man. Mm-hmm. When you met your man, what were you wearing? Right. It's like, so were you bare face and makeup free when you met your man? Since you want to tell me how to keep a man? How many times a week do you cook for your man? I mean, when seriously. You're, when you're home, how I many mean, times do you cook for your man? Do you keep it man? sexy? Do you, do you not wear your bonnet to bed? Because you know that turns dicks right. off because apparently you put dicks in bonnets. Do you wear sexy silk boxers or do you wear basketball shorts? Like, Hello. how do you seduce? How do you keep the How do you keep your man? Your man? Mm-hmm. Do, do uh-huh. you, you know, do you drink a lot of water? When do you're you on your period, nice for him? when you're on your period, do you sleep in the same bed as your man? When you're on your period, do you make sure that your man's dick stays sucked? Because, you know, four, mm-hmm. five whole days week. without no pussy is like, girl, like a whole what? week, a whole week, you know, five, you whole, like, you without his five days and five nights. What do you want me to do? Shrivel up and die? Hmm. Girl, I can I just tell you, I was on a date with a dude. Um, I had so <laughs> this was maybe 10 years ago, maybe longer. I wore tennis shoes on a date because I was under the impression that we were going to a bowling alley. Now, there's gonna be a lot of discussion like, well, I mean, you could have worn your nice shoes. I'm like, I'm going to a fucking bowling alley. It doesn't really matter because I just didn't have any like nice ballet flats or a heel. I had on some really cute tennis shoes that went with my outfit. Mm. And, and homeboy walked in there with a leather jacket and some dressy jeans. He thought I was beautiful. He's like, but your shoes, you know, it's like, I'm thinking like, oh my God, she's so great. But she got on tennis shoes to a date. And I was just like, mm. and then I was sitting here thinking like, why am I on a date with someone who talks to me like this? Bitch, mm. it's my, we're sitting, the thing about it is, we're sitting down at dinner, so you wouldn't even see my shoes. At the time, I was like, oh, I can't ever wear tennis shoes on a date, because wow. somebody would, like, judge me. I'm like, oh, I guess you don't care about your, like, your appearance, because you're wearing tennis shoes on a date with me, so you're wearing dress jeans and a pleather jacket. I know you fucking lying to me. And it was just like, it's like that kind of thing sit with you. Mm-hmm. But it's kind of like, if it's in the tone of he's attractive, well, he's not an asshole. Because I think when you're on dates, you pay attention to how they're treating the wait staff instead of how they're treating you. I'm like, yeah. Because I, I, I probably would have been the like same with her. If that breakfast was good, I'd have been like, let me just sit here and eat these really good eggs. And this really good sausage. The coffee <laughs> is good. So I'm going to sit there. Oh, I might have a light skin mimosa. You know, what? Mm. I'm going to sit here and get a <laughs> day drunk <laughs> on these light skin mimosas. But it's like when I saw that, I was just like, I feel so triggered and attacked right now because she's 42. A light 42. skin mimosa. Let me tell you something. As on the cusp of my 43rd year 
I'm on Sunday Sunday, yeah. Um, let me just tell you how, and I've been saying this for a while, do what you're going to do, man. And, and truly, do it because it's what you want to do. Now, and I was just talking to a great friend of mine. Um, it's her birthday today, and we were <laughs> eating tacos and, and chit-chatting. Aww. And really sitting down with yourself and understanding what it is that you want and what you need. And I had to kind of go through this too Mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Um, When you are clear, really don't, you know, look at the other person as, are they going to like me or do they like what I, no, look and really think like, do I like this person? Am I going to, you know, enjoy being around them? And you know, they're going to provide me what I need and really trying to decipher that as quickly as possible and moving on Mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. I cannot, I cannot express or put enough emphasis on the as quickly as possible. (laughs) Okay. Do not linger. Do not hesitate. Don't sit and wonder. Don't Mm -hmm. give second chances. Like either, you know, you can say, Hey, I, I, clearly we're not looking for the same things, you know, and I hope that you find, you know, what you're looking for and best of luck and moving on. Mm-hmm. Like we're no longer ghosting. We're using our words. All of them. Um, and just saying, Hey, you know, like, thanks a lot. Like, and this is even when, you know, like someone's texting you or they stop texting you. And I've done this before because usually when like, if you've been love bomb and they come on really strong and then all of a sudden, like, Mm-hmm. they take it away and it's waning mm-hmm. um I've had that conversation like okay well you know clearly this isn't what you want so and they're always like well well ah and it's like eh. yeah yeah I don't I don't need I don't need you stop stop talking boo stop so stop talking. And, and as you get older listen most of these men, men don't have a clue mm-hmm. they do not have a clue the truth is a lot of them are lame they don't have anything interesting to talk about um they don't know how to manage their lives. They don't have good coping skills. They mm-hmm. haven't had any therapy or done any self-reflecting or any work. The ones who have are, you know, still out there. Um, and, you know, you're going to have to wade through the, the swamp to get to them, but sure. they're out it's there. There's so much algae in that water. Sure. So I know that's algae. the part right there where you <laughs> just, like, uh. and, you know, as women too, we're not perfect. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying that. And I'm not saying that we're not without flaw or that there aren't things that you right. know we can't, you know, we don't need to address. But right. more often than not, um really interacting with men is um becoming increasingly triggering. Just a downer. Yeah. It's not fun anymore. And I said that years ago. I remember I was like, these niggas aren't fun no more. Mm. they're not fun. like I, and I, it's funny I was talking to a good, 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 good girlfriend of mine and I was like you remember when you were 19 and you could find you a nigga with like an apartment and like a car mm-hmm. and could afford to take you to like get something to eat yeah. at like 19 19 <laughs> like 19. when we were 19 <laughs> and now I'm supposed to believe these 40 year old niggas out here are so broken that they can't that they can only afford coffee dates I think the fuck not child like no I'm gonna take I a coffee date because I'm gonna test you like nigga have you lost mm-hmm. your mind well you can sit here and drink this coffee I'm gonna go over Listen. to the steakhouse and enjoy my steak and my beverage. and I'm gonna start and my- I'm gonna start telling these niggas the truth Call me when you can afford to date. Uh, uh, hello? It's like, I swear. It's like, y'all, these women are coming here. They just want to take our money. You... Okay. What Call money? me when you can what... afford to date. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what money uh-huh. am I taking from you? You know my money. What money am I taking from you? What do you have? In... What's in your savings? What's in, what's in your cre... What's in your checking? What's in your, what's in your other savings? Because you should have at least two. What money am I taking from you? You are trying to take me to the chili, sir. What money am I taking from you? I'm going to be at Ruth Chris. I'm going to see you later, okay? I'm going to go enjoy my cream spinach and my steak. Medium red, don't you give me no burnt ass steak. What money am I taking from you? I can make my chicken tenders at home. Girl, Mm. shut the fuck up. It's like, y'all really, I'm like, what, what do you think this is? Ocean's 11? 
She's like, girl, it's like, it's not, it's not a heist. This is not a heist movie because you don't have anything. Why would I come to you and steal from you? What do you have that I want? Just, just how many when you can afford a date? It's like, please let me know. It's like, please let me know. I'm like, just say you don't. Like, I want you to hop through these hoops. Tell me why you're worthy to go on a date. Meanwhile, you got girls like Danny Lay who literally shitted on black women for years. And now that that same black man that you say, he want me, he going to treat me better, treated you like the gutter trash that you are. Now you want our um, sympathy. Baby, I don't. I sympathize with that child. Yep. Because you are a bird and he is a dodo. And that is a very (laughs) bad genetic makeup. Jesus. Y'all just doom that poor baby. That poor baby. You know what? Put that baby on the aisle. Put her on the aisle. Put her on the list. Put her on the prayer list. Because I'm sick of y'all damaging these kids. You said he is a dodo. (laughs) He's a dodo. Dodo-dio. Dodo-dio. The baby is a dodo-dio. Tired of his ass. I'm like, I don't care. It's like, I'm like, girl, I'm not going to shit on you, but please know I see you. I don't want to hear him like, oh my God, no, no, because that's the problem. You weaponize girls like Danny Lay against black women. You let that girl call that man a nigga several different times and none of y'all ass checked her on that shit. None of you. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Why are y'all okay with that non-black woman calling that black man a nigger? I don't care if it was a uh. I'm okay if it's not the hard off. Why are you letting that non-black woman call that black man a nigga and none of y'all checking her ass on it? Because y'all don't care. Get the fuck out of my face. Speaking of getting the fuck off my face, um, so that lady who make the music and she got a baby, but she ain't making the music and she turned the comments off on her Instagram, came and had a whole hour on the fourth part of the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. So I will say this. Cook know that I'm a Bravo-holic and one of my favorite franchises is Potomac. Mm -hmm. I watch this in silence because I'm not doing this with y'all. I have muted a lot. It is one of my favorite franchises and people who literally said black people are more than violence and came to this franchise because of violence and now want to sit here and like, excuse me, violence is above us. Really? Why are y'all just watching this show? Season five with the vi- Shut the f- Ooh, see? Vi- see? In silence. Listen. In group checks. In small, but I'm like, I'm not doing this with y'all because I swear rational thought goes out the door and I to a certain extent I I get it I used to be that person 10 years ago watching Mm -hmm. these shows after a while you realize these are people and people are complicated and sometimes there are two sides of wrong going on on your screen but we're not going to have that conversation two sides of wrong is (sighs) Onika coming here to talk about women and their choices with men that is just like girl I whoop Whoop, you lucky you're Nicki Minaj because if you were some random ass girl, somebody would have brought up your husband real quick. Girl, I know you're not talking about her. <laughs> Who you met? Mm-mm. 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 What? I know, girl. I, you must be talking in dodo because I wish the fuck you would sit here and judge me <sighs> about my choice in man. Man. <sighs> so, she did not do a terrible job. I was just sitting there like, what are y'all doing? So, so she did the thing that Andy Cohen is a whole white man wants oh. to do, but he knows he can't because he's a whole white man. Gay or not, Jewish or not, he's a white man and he can't be just doing these kind of questions with these black women. And he know that. Bravo know that. A lot of people know that. But the fact that now you see Nikki love this show. There's a lot of people who love this show. You could have pulled anybody out that you could pull anybody Bruh, out. Where is Yvette Nicole Brown? I'm where's, just saying. Where's my, my boo <laughs> saying would have been fair. She's a very where's, good host. Where's Kendall, the boy from um, VH1? He's a really good. Um, Come on. 
there's so many people other than I, I, I really do like him and um he does good recaps mm -hmm. so that was an opportunity like i just with everybody but fucking nikki and it mm. Mm. so homegirl she had a shady questions some of the questions is like no nah, homegirl got that coming it's fine i'll allow it but for the most part i was like yeah see this is where i was like kind of checked out so oh here's the deal. good <laughs> so here's the deal a lot of people talk about candace and her mama mm -hmm. and i wish she would get on the phone with that lady in atlanta named candy mm. and talk to her because they tried that with candy too she's like i hear what the hell y'all saying but let me tell y'all something she's my fucking mother and mm -hmm. that is where we need to be so people don't like candace but they instinctively want her to cuss out her mama on national television because they want to see it. And that was the tone of the conversation. And I have a very big question. Y'all are so full of shit. Some of y'all don't mm. even cuss in front of your grandmamas. Y'all let your mama walk all over y'all asses, but you want to tell Candace what she should do with her mother. I know y'all fucking lying. I wish the hell y'all y'all sitting here. I'd have cussed my mama. What the fuck you want to no you wouldn't if you should have you would have sat there and ate your fucking food you can miss me with this y'all are not cussing out your mamas y'all are not cussing out your aunts your aunties who sit there in your fucking face and talk about your husband and your kids and call your kids nappy headed y'all are not cussing out your mamas your grandmamas your nannies your aunties your tts you are not cussing them out so why are you sitting here wanting her to cuss her out because that's entertainment baby the cameras go off she's still a fucking mother stop doing that it's like nikki shut up shut up like no you need to cuss her out and then on top of that so miss banaj is very successful i enjoy when she is on features i don't enjoy her talking but i enjoy her features Okay, it's like she's made she's made a time for herself. She has she's carved out a nice niche for herself. For her to sit there and say to Candace, she uses auto tune. I looked really like I know you're not talking. I know you're not talking about using auto tune, baby. Play with people who don't really or not know you're famous, but don't know all your music. I think of three songs right off top of my head where you used auto tune. So for you to say they don't know you can sing, child, sing. Who don't know Candace can't sing? So then it became sing, sing. Let me give you also the fact that they have been talking and yelling for at least ten hours. <laughs> so you and then it was like the people who don't even like her, Mia being one of them. No, she should sing. You should sing. You are singer. Why are you not singing? Um, you're a stripper. Why the fuck you not on a pole? Oh. oh. See? See? Mia, shut up. I'd have dug in her ass. The oh, fuck you think? Mm. See? Small spaces, group chats. Can't do it. Because I'm sorry. <laughs> She'd have been white by the time I dealt with her ass. See, this is like, Mia, you are not dealing with hood rules. Because if Candace was going to cut to the white meat, your mama would have been called a crackhead by now. Fuck you and your crackhead ass mama. See how that works? Ooh. See how that works? Those are hood see. rules. Yeah. Those yeah. are hood rules. It's like, girl, you 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 don't know nothing about no hood rules. Because they're like, mamas are off limits. In what hood is that? It's a whole your mama joke. It's the dozens. It's Jonin. There's whole books. There's a whole show called Yo Mama. What are you talking about? Y'all Y'all just don't like Candace because y'all don't like black women. It's fine. I already knew that. So them saying, oh no, sing, sing, sing. And then she sang and she did real well because she was hesitant to do it because she was like, one, she has a new single to come out. She's like, can I sing another song? And it's like, can I sing a gospel? No, why are you not just singing your song? Who the fuck are you, Onika? It's like, it's Nika Banal. She could sing for Onika. I'm, she's like, I mean, she got this stage. It's the fucking reunion. She'd be on this stage if she didn't even hum a tune. She'd still be on the stage. What are y'all talking about? Mm. So you have Onika's like, and then she did well. But the thing about it is, you thought she wasn't going to. And she did. Her husband, 
was talking to her she was because she know because it's like it's like you know when it's your person or at least a friend you can read on their face when something wrong so she looked at him it's like i think they were on a break because mia had to go to the bathroom because you know she had to go that's fine go to the bathroom baby i don't care so she you know, they, were <laughs> they were on a break and candace was just looking at her husband's face like everything okay no i'm just kind of upset i don't like the line of questioning Oh, he didn't say he didn't like the questions. He said he didn't like the way it was asked. There's a difference. You didn't like the line of questioning, which I didn't like either because it bothered me. Mm. And he was just going to, we'll talk about it later. So Nikki apparently was watching the show and said, um, candy girl. So, okay. Uh Uh-oh. Um, Candy girl husband need to sit down, chai. Not child, but chai. Now, not even his name. And I listen. And I, I was like about her. Let me tell y'all. It is something about her that it when okay, I think I saw that tweet. Mm-hmm. And I feel like. She tweets. I feel like she's not the one doing the tweeting. I feel like her white assistant is she is tweeting, <laughs> and she <laughs> is just repeating like stuff she heard Nikki say. Because what is a chai? Yeah, and if I like saw that, I would have thought either it's the chi, or you're talking about shy like Chicago. Like, what is a chai? And I don't, I do not like it. I do not like that. I do not like that. I don't either. I feel like whoever tweeted that was a, was a Caucasian. And I'm. (laughs) So I will say she kept putting chat in different. I was like, yeah, yeah. What? Um, what? Because I mean, she did say she like, I like all of them. They're all nice women. I'm like, and that's fine. I see it. It's fine. But it's like. Girl, ma'am, you would not want somebody saying that about your husband, ma'am. You literally, your fans doxed your husband's victim. Mm. You try to shut up a victim and you want to sit here and do this thing. Oh, I'm sorry. This was the other thing that she did. So, um there's just something very weird about the fact that so one of the husbands on there he is a white australian man and while he was drunk there's another man on there you probably know this name juan dixon yes Mm -hmm. so you see how fine juan is juan is a very attractive man um and so he said oh i will suck his dick this was years ago while he was drunk when he said it the white man right right Juan did not hear him say it. His Robin, his partner, did hear him say it. And she's never walked back. She know he said that shit. And it's like, they're like, he's probably just joking. Nothing has ever, Juan is like, yeah, okay, I don't care. And it's like, people are very, why is he not saying anything? Why, I'm like, Garrett Chad, if somebody said to me, I'm like, time out, homeboy. What did y'all want him to do? So basically, y'all think it's weird that he is not being extremely problematic about this. What did y'all want him to do? Beat his ass? What did y'all want to happen? You mean he actually is mature enough to go, yeah, okay, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> what do you want him to do, beat him up? You want him mm-hmm. to be problematic because that's what y'all would do? Do y'all hear yourselves? So that also bothered me. It's like, there's a lot of, girl, that's gross. You mean to tell me he's literally just not making a big deal? Oh my God, this is wrong. Oh, is it though? <laughs> is, is that what y'all want? So apparently the barbs attacked um, Kansas' husband, Chris, and I'm putting attacked in quotes because, I mean, it, like, she's like, you need to sit at home. <laughs> like, like, y'all don't be, y'all don't even buy her goddamn music, but y'all like, let me, let me tweet it up. It was like Kermit the Frog all over the Twitter. Because apparently. you know who Nicki Minaj's fan base is? Mm-hmm. My daughter. Exactly. A teenager. A teenager. Not a 40 something year old white man with a bald head and a salt and pepper beard who didn't even know her fans were called barbs. He's like, 
Her fans, you mean the barbs? What is that? See, he don't know. He's Good not time. her favorite, so he don't know. So then he was just like, oh my Lord. They're like, shut your, shut your ass up. You don't talk about the queen. Wait a minute, this is the same person who was upset that she was number two behind Astro World at her big <laughs> ass age, at her big ass part of her career. And I also blame Stormy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Talk about a whole damn child. Well, and the thing about it is you tell it like she's talking about she has like Kansas was talking about her streams. But I was like, it's like half a million streams, and then how many um albums she sold? Niggas like, oh, okay. I'm like, girl, that actually so I think at the time it was like 20,000 when she looked at it. And then you look at other big RB albums. Shout out to Rodney the voice was talking about how like how many Jasmine had sold, and Jasmine Sullivan can sing the house down. Mm-hmm. That album is. Mm-hmm. It's like, girl, I can't look. I need to be in a certain kind of headspace to listen to some people. Hence, why I have not listened to all of Adele's album because I was not in the proper headspace to listen to it. I'm like, I- I'm not there yet. I can't. Mm-hmm. I need a proper headspace for Adele. Period. <laughs> it's like I. Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. Because I can't go down that well. So the fact that a Nicki Minaj is like, oh, I guess that's a good thing. Cause like, uh, this is why I can't fuck with you. Same. I, I just need you to be on the futures that I like. I need you to add and not subtract to R and B songs and because I'm not doing this with you. Um, and then <laughs> it's kind of like I just can't. And I'm just like, this is just whack as hell. And I'm like, that's not even necessary. I just didn't like her energy on the reunion i think it was just like don't ever do this again because the bad part about it is if this was like somebody that wasn't Nicki minaj her husband and her brother would have came up at least 20 minutes in because you sitting real pretty doing this and it's like wait a minute girl hold up i know you're not saying it Mm -mm." so there it is and also little miss mia So, of course, Nikki has some next day thoughts. I'm putting that in quotes. I am. I got in Mia's ass pause with a Z. Girl, you can write S C. What the fuck? <laughs> About things I really wish made the show. I asked a couple people of questions, a couple hours of questions, and only about half of hour of it with commercials could really be used due to time. Yeah, because she was at the reunion for three hours. Girl, y'all better, y'all better give us the super cut. Okay, so I'm gonna see it. On top of that, Wendy cut me off when I really had when I had a really spicy point to make. Mia and Robin are the friend that going amp a bitch like me up all day by sitting there looking cute and laughing. I'll keep going just to keep making them laugh. Plus, I know when I tag them in, they're gonna roast the fuck out of you too. Um, yeah, because I'm that friend, which is why I, I fuck with Robin Dixon. Um, because Nikki also said it was corny for Wendy to look at her cards. So Candace said there's a clip somewhere of, I believe it was Ramona at a Roni reunion holding Andy's cards in her hand, par- parsing through them while he's sitting right there next to her. Find it. That will be all. Because everybody's trying to act like nobody's ever done that to Andy. I'm like, so that's technically not true. She has oh. done that. So I'm just like, girl, what, what? So Mind you, she did big up Mia, but then she didn't like that. Mia didn't like that Nikki said that she dug in Mia's ass. So Mia said, typical female. Now, time out. Y'all already know how the fuck I feel about any woman calling another woman a female. Okay. It's like, ugh. So she said, so this is apparently it was from it, it, next day was yesterday. We're recording on a Tuesday. So yeah, typical female. Meanwhile, I've said nothing but positive things about this girl and all this girl and all of my press interviews, baby, no one could get into my ass, play the tape back. <laughs> so um, now remember I said that if this was the hood, Mia's mama would have been called a crackhead by now. 
I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure someone has called her mama a crackhead by now. Because <sighs> they, of course, they're the barbs, so they eat her ass up. But yes, red flag is always someone, a woman, calling another woman a female. So a, a lot of, it's a lot of wrong going there. But I will say, I like Candace. I like her a lot. Because apparently she stuck up for Ashley. And everybody's like, why would you stick up for Ashley? I'm like, because she's not the villain that y'all trying to write her to be. It's kind of like, yeah, I can call full head, full head all day long. But Nikki, you on our set. You don't get to come in here and act like this. Because one, you. man, we're not doing this. So everybody's like, no, she did. No, she should have said nothing. Like, no, she didn't have to. But also, she's not the villain that y'all trying to make her out to be. First of all, I don't give a fuck if it was Mickey, 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 <laughs> Mickey. Bobby, <laughs> or Ralph, Mike. I don't give a good goddamn who it was. Don't be coming to be here talking that motherfucking shit. This is the motherfucking Housewives franchise. We're here for the back and forth. So no, you don't just need to come up here and sit on stage and act like you're going to say whatever it is you want to say is say way anything or say something that's not true and not back it up. Okay? I just don't even understand. I was like... And that bitch shouldn't have been there. She shouldn't have been there. And not to get any intimate, because that's why I can't enjoy my, that's why I can't enjoy the conversation. I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying you, Pine. Like, no, no. Stop. It is so funny. Well, it, couldn't you refer to that? She shouldn't have been there. She should not have. <laughs> I'm sorry. When they said, oh, you know, she's mm. trying to, you know, come, da, da, da. I was like, we know this is PR for her to try to get, you know, and good with women, older women and older audiences because she's burnt with the kids. You can't bring your nigga around none of your audience members, okay? Sorry, bitch. <laughs> I'm just the like, fuck? I just, I just, it's kind of like, like you go, <laughs> see, mm-hmm. I don't know what to tell y'all, but it's and like, I'm like, I, like I, I get it, <laughs> I understand, but it's like, Andy, what the entire Fuck, bro. Like, and I already had my issues with Andy Cohen, but I let y'all Bravo girls. I let y'all. <laughs> I leave y'all alone. I don't say nothing. I let y'all. I'm like, I don't say nothing. I don't say nothing. But I'm, I don't mm-hmm. say nothing. I'm like, I have my issues with Bravo. Now, I am a casual Bravo person. Like, I through you mm-hmm. all, I absorb. You know, through all the recaps. Like, I watch recap content. Um. Uh, they're they're in other spaces that I follow if, as far as pop culture wise, like because they may associate with you know some hip hop people or rappers. Mm-hmm. I'ma see them or whatever on the hip hop pages where I be. I'm on so, hip hop pages. I mean, so like yeah, like it intersects and all that, like black mm-hmm. entertainment and culture intersects in mm-hmm. that regard, especially socially. So mm-hmm. like, okay, great, but I'm sorry of all the people like that's why it's like yes I, I'm, I'm okay with you know but this to me like I have such a major issue with this I'm it's, sorry. it's it was just kind I, of like, I, you know, I, I can't I, I, I like just off GP I'm just like nah it's, it's a lot. It's like, it's a lot. I, I know she left that nigga at home she better have but if she brought him with her oh I, I would have had a problem I, I, I think uh, that's the thing I, I think, think, she, I think he was it. not there. It's kind of like I was going. I and just, she would have heard about it. She would have heard me talking about that shit. Please. Like, get that motherfucker to fuck up out the goddamn building right now. Please. Expeditiously. Like, <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> Take, like, if you don't send that motherfucker back to where he came from, I don't give a good goddamn who he is. Like, this is the type of energy you want, bitch? Like, oh, fuck no. No, mm-hmm. bitch, what? And I'm, and I, and I'm concerned <clears throat> because, number one, we know this is not her first rodeo with this. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. Secondly, is she trying to prove something? Like, does she have a point to prove? Like, are you trying to say, like, they're re- they're, they're, they're re- they're, they're, they're they're rehabable they're able to be rehabilitated like is that what you're trying to say like approve bitch like what the fuck girl i I, I have i I have to tell you i have no idea 
Who Who is is just like, like I don't understand what. Who knows these many pedophiles? Who knows these many people, these many pedophiles raised (laughs) on purpose? Child, I don't know. Because I'm just sitting here like, I don't. Who? Whomst? 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 Among us knows this many, this many. Yeah, I, and, don't, I don't know. And are are are, are okay with pro- proposing marriage? And you know what? Did you hear about? I'm. I was going to talk about this on my show, and I'm still going to talk about it. But okay. Did you hear about the lady, the author of the Lovely Bones, Laura? Bray I Bolt? saw that earlier today, and I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, wait a minute. So, she lied. Is that? What I don't. I don't know if she. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't know if she was actually raped or not. And now that's something I feel like should be investigated. Okay. Um, if oh, if it's okay. not confirmed, but I don't want to go there and you know mm. and say that because I know it may be triggering, but the more and more we I hear about this and I read into this, um, one of the things that struck me the most and why I was gonna talk about it, and I'm and it's draw my parallel to Nikki, like mm. this man. Um, always claimed his innocence, mm-hmm. went to jail, mm-hmm. came out, met a woman, and they met in a time where they were married and she believed him from the start that he didn't do it and he's innocent. But he was just like the stigma mm-hmm. of being a registered sex offender and being you know, a rapist and how it impacted his life. He was saying that she wanted to have children, but he refused because he did not want to carry that stigma into his children's lives. And now that he's exonerated, and he said this in front of the judge when, um, you know, he gave his remarks, he was like, and now we're too old to have them. And I thought about that and I was like, wow. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> and it, 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 <laughs> I, I just that, so yeah, yeah, I can't wait for you to unpack this because I'm like that is a lot. That was a lot because it just like the whole story. Yeah, I'm so like not only and everybody's like, oh, she needs she owes him a public apology, and I'm like, you people are fucking crazy. She owes him way more than that. Yeah, it's more than an apology because I'm like, yeah, because I like because I saw the tweet and I haven't dug into it. I'm like, yeah, wait, what? I was like, uh, okay. It's like when oh, that's, this too. is a lot. How I wait till I get into it because I was like, yeah, I can't wait because I need you to unpack it because I'm like, motherfucker. But no, <laughs> I was but like, no, wait, wait. what? I was like, sitting like, wait. I was what? so disgusted, but it's like when you see how he did that. Mm-hmm. But then I look at Nikki's situation, and I feel like she is emboldening him and making him even more brazen. Yeah, and it's just like it's very concerning. It is because I'm like, I'm sorry, y'all. He went to jail. <laughs> this isn't like there was no court case, and he didn't go to jail. He went to jail for he took these a two deal. Because, yeah. yeah, he just plead down to a lesser charge because he didn't want to, you know, go through. I'm, I don't remember why, but regardless, sis was just like, bruh, all of this happened. And, and she hasn't changed her story. But it's kind of like, it's weird. We have to get out of this thought that women just doing this to be famous. I'm like, I'm sorry. What, it, what fame do you get? What do you gain out of basically being open about your assault that some people cannot prove or think it didn't happen because it's not the lifetime movie way Hmm. it's like oh it didn't happen like he didn't jump out the bushes and grab her so no this didn't happen fake news and it's like so please turn off lifetime because that's not how things happen. And the bad part about it, if you talk to more women, you will actually know most times they're assaulted by people that they know. It's mm. not people they don't know. The people they know. 
or yeah. people thought that was okay or people who preyed on them or tried to who gained their trust mm-hmm. baby it's more if this is not lifetime people are not just grabbing people out the bushes even though that actually does happen okay nope i'm not okay <clears throat> Let's go in a high key because no, I'm glad Potomac is 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 taking a hiatus, stream deep space. That's all I'm gonna say about that. High key. So we got justice for Ahmad <laughs> Arbery. Amen. Just for Ahmad Arbery's family, because he is on the other side of Jordan. He is away from the pain of this world, but his family is getting justice because those men are going to jail. Yeah. Do you think they're gonna pick up Kyle Rittenhouse um charges federally? I would hope so, but the bad part of it is probably not. And that's the problem. Yeah. That is the problem. Because if they like, don't, they should really riot. They really, they uh, child, you came here. So hmm. I'm sorry, but his mom needs to be picked up federally. Hello. The judge I'm like, let me know when the civil case is coming. Let me know when the civil case. He ain't got no money. But oh, I'm sorry. Need Something oh, yeah. need to happen. His lawyers grifted it all. He really but, did. Yeah. I, know, I know you got it from Mr. Silver Spoons, and he he you know he might have three dollars. He got two nip, nickels to rub together, probably for your fun. That's probably you gonna get it for. But um, fucking he, Rick Schroeder. It was like if Just, you could have told me, like which guy from the eighties would be helping, and who would be like borderline racist. Rick Schroeder would. I'm sorry, not borderline is racist. It wouldn't be Rick Schroeder. I'm like, not Ricky Schroeder, not Mr. Silver Spoons. <sighs> Chachi, yes. Ricky Schroeder. God, oh. Mayo is a disappointment. Mm-hmm. But fucking Rick Stratton. I mean, like, bro, that was Rick Stratton, man. Child. I was like, how did we, how did we get hit? Child. So this is the other thing about it, because the thing that happened, and we'll talk about Waukesha County, the Christmas parade. That's why this got on my nerves when they were trying to compare it to the Ahmaud Arbery case. Ahmaud Arbery was murdered in February. We didn't find out about it until May. They pushed this <laughs> under the rug. The reason that there was public outrage because nothing happened to somebody, to three men who murdered somebody. Nothing happened. That is why he got justice. Not because y'all were doing the right thing. Not y'all weren't mention, doing they, the right thing. They recorded it and uploaded it. like, And then know. said, see, see, he was doing something wrong. And it's he was like, jogging. <laughs> minding his business. Minding his black ass business. And the bad part, when that prosecutor was like, so he wasn't doing anything. No, he was just running. Yes, he wasn't doing anything. No. Mm. I'm sorry, case closed. You are a dumbass. <laughs> Y'all should have took a plea. Because you probably thought you were going to get away with it. So Listen, they so, thought they were going to get away with it, but they really didn't figure or well, no, they thought they were going to get away with it because they were actually able to call the DA's office mm-hmm. and get their own fucking DA to sweep it under the have it assigned to her so she can sweep it under the rug. And it went through like three different DAs till it got to a fourth DA and they were like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. So here's another thing for justice (laughs) for Ahmaud Arbery. That district attorney has been booked on charges linked to her mis- alleged, I say alleged, mishandling of the case. Former Glenn Glenn County District Attorney Jackie Johnson has been arrested and booked for violation of oath and obstruction in the Ahmad Arbery murder case. She was indicted by grand jury last week. That mm-hmm. is from September 8th. That tweet is from September 8th, 2021. So let's see. <clears throat> Excellency, I read that part. Johnson was released from the Glen County Detention Center on a $10,000 bond, the paper reports. State prosecutors alleged that she used her position to delay arrest of the white man who chased and killed the 25-year-old Arbery. 
Johnson was the county's top prosecutor when Arbery was fatally shot last year and one of the armed men who pursued him had worked for her as an investigator. Georgia Attorney General Chris Carr, a Republican, sought the indictment after requesting an investigation of possible misconduct by local prosecutors who failed to bring charges in a killing. Father and son, Greg and Travis McMichael, armed themselves with guns and gave chase in a pickup truck on February 23rd, 2020, after they spotted Arby running in their neighborhood just outside the port city of Brunswick. A neighbor, William Bryan, joined the chase and took cell phone video of Travis McMichael fatally shooting Arbery at close range with a shotgun as Arbery fought back with his fists. The McMichaels told police they thought Arby was a burglar and that Travis McMichael shot him in self-defense. No arrests were made in the shooting until more than two months later after the cell phone video leaked online, sparking national outcry and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation took over the case. The McMichaels and Brian are now jailed as they await trial on murder charges. So this, um, this article is from November 25th. So that's why it's like, wait, what are they talking about? Um, yeah, because it's a little bit behind, but yeah, tears really. Um... Wow. Yeah, I. <clears throat> this is why I don't want to hear anything from anybody trying to compare what happened to Ahmad Arbery to mm. what happened in Waukesha County. Mm. And I'm going to tell y'all why. It's like, that's not even close to the same thing. It took two months. And the only reason why something happened is because those dumbasses thought that that video, it was cute to pass along that video and that somehow that video exonerated them. So let me tell y'all what happened in Waukesha County. Daryl Brooks Jr., is the man that was accused of driving his vehicle into the Waukesha Christmas Parade on November 21st. He was charged Monday. This article is from, let's see, November 29th. So yesterday, he was charged Monday with a sixth count of first degree intentional homicide. According to the amended criminal complaint, the charge is in connection with the death of a child who was struck in the attack and died two days later. The child is not named in the complaint, instead is referred to as victim F. Mm -hmm. Jackson Sparks' death was announced on his verified GoFundMe page and was confirmed by his baseball club and his family's church in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. He was eight. His 12-year-old brother, Tucker, was also struck and injured when he was hit by the SUV at the parade. Tucker is more than 60 people who were injured at the parade. Waukesha County District Attorney Sue Opper could file attempted homicide or reckless endangerment and reckless injury charges related to other victims, which is true. She has not indicated when those decisions might be made. At least one child is still on a ventilator and several extreme dance team members remain in the ICU. According to recent updates to GoFundMe pages, conditions of many of the adults who were injured are unknown. Brooks, 39, of Milwaukee, made his initial court appearance last Tuesday. Brooks, 39, of Milwaukee, made his initial court appearance last Tuesday and was charged with five counts of intentional first-degree homicide. According to online court records, Circuit Judge Michael Bourne, Boren reviewed the amended complaint and will address it at Brooks's next scheduled hearing January 14th. At the initial hearing last week, Opper cited Brooks's long record of convictions around Wisconsin and other states and asked for a $5 million bail. Court Commissioner Kevin Costa, $5 million bail. Hmm. Court Commissioner, I, that, yeah. <laughs> $5 million bill. Okay. Court okay. Commissioner Kevin Costello called the amount extraordinary but fitting for this case. Of course it is. According to the criminal complaint, Brooks had several options to exit the parade route, but instead increased his speed and plowed into the crowd. Witnesses told police he appeared to be zigzagging in an attempt to hit as many people as possible. The parade had already started when Waukesha police the Detective Tom Casey saw a 2010 Ford Escape coming down south down White Rock Avenue toward the parade. Casey stepped in front of the Escape, pounding on the hood of the car and repeatedly yelled at Brooks to stop. Brooks drove past while Casey ran after the Escape and radioed other police officers as the SUV began hitting people. Another officer, Officer Brian Butrin, also tried to stop the vehicle. Brooks was able to drive away from the parade route and tried to hide the car near Carroll University. The complaint said he was later arrested at a house where he stopped and asked for help, saying he was homeless. Police identified the initial five victims who died. 
I am not reading their names. I will say that y'all, I'm not doing that. Um, Cause I'm going to let their souls rest, but the ages mm. range from the fifties to the oldest person was 80. Brooks is scheduled for preliminary hearing on January 14th. Each homicide charge carries a mandatory life sentence. Now I'm saying this for a reason. So this, this happened about a week and a half, two weeks ago. That man has already been arrested. That man has already been to trial. That man is in jail right now because he had yeah. a five minute aisle bail. You don't want to mm. know why that's different. So I saw a lot of white people going, where is the outrage for this? You don't need any outrage. He was arrested. He's going to trial. He's going to jail for the rest of his life. Because I think in Wisconsin, there is no, they don't have the death penalty. So he's going to jail. He's going to have at least probably five life sentences. You don't need any outrage because outrage comes when things don't happen. They come from some, when it's injustice. Yeah. That man is going to jail. (laughs) Let me tell you something. And this is, and I was thinking about that. They were like trying to really pump up the story like, yeah, he did it. And it's like, well, I mean, we don't know his reasonings for doing it, but he's in jail. He's going to jail. Um, what is the what would the outrage be for? What do you need the outrage for? Like, where and, why and, are y'all not marching? What are we marching for? What are we marching for? Why would we march? He's going to jail. Justice was done. Those parents of, and, and loved ones of those victims or the people that he killed mm-hmm. um, can go to sleep at night and go about the business of mourning their loved ones Correct. and mourning their loss. They don't mm-hmm. have the additional stress of injustice Correct. and the extra stress that that's going to take on them, knowing that that person's out there roaming around. Mm-hmm. And no, they don't. They don't. It, no, now they can go about the business of mourning. Yeah, they you caught the person. It's not more. he's not roaming the countryside because hmm. it sounds like there's something else brewing under that. Like, see, he's just a monster. But if this was Kyle Rittenhouse, you'd be like, oh, maybe he's just mentally ill because Daryl Brooks Jr. could be mentally ill. We don't know that, hmm. but a we lot don't of y'all know, just don't yeah. care. It's like, no, he killed a child. I'm like. He did. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of mentally ill people who have harmed themselves, mostly themselves, but also other people. Yeah. And um, I, we don't need to like, the point is, he's going to be punished for what he did. He did. There's like, uh, yeah. You don't I, need a march. <laughs> You're like, you could raise money. Um, um, Mega Wisconsinite J.J. Watt is paying for the funeral. So that's an expense mm-hmm. you do not have to think about. Everyone can mourn. Everyone you can, can mourn in a safe space. Be, not, mm-hmm. not that, you know, or better yet, and not in a stress of how am I going to bury my loved one place? Because yeah. that's mm-hmm. what it's like. That's a lot of stress when it happens so abruptly and it's not something you plan. It's -hmm. like, but the fact that that's one thing, like, okay, I don't have to think about the financial part of burying my loved one. I can just deal with the grief of my loved one. And that's going to be a lifetime thing. Grief don't go away. And I'm here for this because I'm here for just like, look, is it tragic? Yeah. Is it sad? Absolutely. Do I understand why or no? No, I don't. Yeah. But these, the family, every, everyone that is impacted is, <laughs> they're, they're, they've gotten justice. Yeah. And, <sighs> and it's not it, the same thing. It's it will never, not, you don't ever have to fight for something to get justice for you. So they're not, and it's not like this was a white man. And now they said, well, you know, the nine-year-old, he got suspended from school last week. So he probably was running out in the street anyway. So that's, you know, like there, you, you see what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to then watch them assassinate the character of your loved one. Like, well, he was no angel. Correct. So, well, he was no angel like y'all do with black people. Because that was the other thing about Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm like, so y'all, I'm like, I, we hear y'all when y'all say that's a message to black people. It's actually more of a West message 
to good meaning white people. I didn't. I didn't hear it. It landed on deaf ears for me. I, I they was like, "See, it's a message for you." I'm like, "It's really not. It's a message for well, white like people." We already fucking knew y'all get away with murder, so right? What, but the thing really- about it is, for me, it was don't help them niggas because hmm. we throw. I'm like, yeah, don't know because you just as bad because Kyle Rittenhouse killed two white men in cold blood and got away yeah. with it and said self defense. I'm like, yeah, that ain't that ain't to us. That's to y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, and also too that's not a, I don't I don't like that I don't like the message that that sends especially to these young white males because mm-hmm. ew right it's like you can just go across you can just go across state lines you can ew. go get an illegal um firearm and go shoot people if you feel so inclined the fuck ew. is going on here and then you like they you know they're shooting up the school yeah, I saw that today. Murdering I said, people. oh, good Lord. They, yeah, and I was just watching a clip. The guy was trying to pretend to be the sheriff to get in one of the rooms, and the students didn't let him in. Yikes. But yeah, that was too fucking real. But this that is, is way too... That this is what happened today. Kids, I said, oh, good Lord. This is what these kids are dealing with, and that's why they're cussing everybody out, honestly. Pretty much. I mean, if I had to go to school and do drills for school shooters, and I knew Ethan literally Ethan, stuff that we didn't have to do, like, like you know, generations fire before drills. us, we had fire drills. The 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 generations before us, it's like they had to do like for like bomb, clear bomb, bomb drills. drills. Yeah, and it's like for us, it was like we had to do fire. <laughs> we had fire. That was it. Like oh, it's a fire drill. And depending on where, like maybe earthquake drills or hurricane drills, depending on what part of the country you're in. Now these kids got to do with like active shooter drills. Active as shooter a child. And my thing is, you wonder why they're cussing y'all out. You wonder why they're like fuck wonder, y'all for this. It's just, they have absolutely every reason to cuss you. The y'all fuck so out. sensitive. Like we sensitive. And it's just like I'm just like I can't wait till these kids grow up and get into the workforce just so they can pick it apart. Like this is stupid. These practices are stupid. Like all these practices are stupid. Where culture is inherently white supremacist, and I will I'm never going to stop reminding people of that shit. Correct. So (laughs) correct because y'all lost y'all goddamn minds for real. Oh, it. It's so terrible. It's mm-mm. y'all lost y'all day. I'm like, I'm leaving these kids alone. Uh, I'm, I'm nope, because that's a lot. I'm like, that's something that we didn't have to deal with. We did not have active shooter drills. It's like it's part of like, hello, hi. Mm-hmm. Um, it's part of that people's policies that you got to look at videos now as adults but as a child you should not have to watch no active shooter and videos about, as adults they make us watch videos we don't get the same training as these kids absolutely because it's totally different it's like hi um the in the, the sad morbid part of it is kids are more prepared for active shooters than we are as adults they are because it's like, like no you need to do this it's like what? It's You're true. 12 years old telling me what the fuck to do? It's true. What the hell? They should my not know anything about this. Me is probably like, no, Ma, you do this. Oh, for real? Mm-hmm. <laughs> she did. She really, I was like, really? She was. I was like, y'all do active shooter drills? She was like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, I didn't realize it. And she, because she even, I can't remember what we were talking about. Mm-hmm. And yeah, because normally, like, whenever I hear gunshots, I just be like, oh, they shoot. I mean, if it's like not like right, like, like two feet away from me, I'm mm-hmm. not doing anything. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're shooting. Okay. <laughs> if I make the jokes, it's like on New Year's Eve, I'm like, you better hit them. If you in the hood, you and better I hit the floor because they're going to be shooting. And I hate being that way, but it's true. I've, it's true. Like there was a shooting on campus this homecoming. Mm. And I really was just like, really? Well, a, gun right. a gun went okay. off. It wasn't a shooting. A gun went off. A gun went off. Okay. But I really was just like, oh, word? Okay. Like, it just. Like, I real, and you know, and then what happened? happened? <laughs> I know because, but it is so funny because I remember we were watching My So Called Life. And oh! The episode, 
where Ricky brought the gun to school yes, and it went yes, off. Yes, yes. Oh my God. And she was like, so they're still in school. Like y'all just, I was like, yeah. She was like, they didn't dismiss y'all for the day. Or like, da, da, da. like, no, yeah, no, no one got shot. It just went off. Like it was a gun. Like mm -hmm. they found the gun and they took it. So yeah. Like, yeah. Go back to school, go back to class. Like, mm -hmm. because it was like, she, cause I was like, well, back then I was like, there were no school shootings. Like you didn't do Correct. that. You, yeah. It's like, like, at the most, it no. was like Columbine. And that was like 99. Correct. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that was my last year of high school. Yeah, like. And it was kind of like, yeah. Uh, yeah, and oh. that was, was like 94. So I was like, it was extremely, like, that was something that was so rare. It was like a freak. Like somebody it was like. like a fluke. It's like, this don't happen yeah. all the time. No, that was like, oh my gosh. But now it's just like, yeah, this is like a thing. And it's gotten yeah. to, the, to yeah. the fact that, yeah, the police are out of, the police are out, out, outgunned. But my thing is, how are the police outgunned in these towns, but they find the weapons and artillery when it's a BLM march? I, but don't answer that. That was being yeah, rhetorical. No. Mm -mm. That's just, rhetorical. We I'm don't want y'all to answer that. Please, no. Nope. Go right back. But no. I was just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right okay so this is the last topic and i will just say this i got the update um we're gonna be talking about this because i was like what the hell is going on but um as of november 30th chris cuomo has been suspended indefinitely from cnn uh -huh. and like my good sister Dad o'brien said is that with or without pay come on I said, wait, what is going? I was like, wait, what is today? So for anybody who has not heard, because I was like, huh? Uh, listen, huh? Uh, he, huh? He, did, he is tacky. Ooh, they tacky. <laughs> Honey, using your journalistic <laughs> so, platform yo, I was just like, and integrity to cover for your for your ass, bravo. So for anybody who doesn't know, Chris Cuomo works at CNN. Mm -hmm. His brother is former New York governor, Andrew Cuomo. Y'all probably have seen clips of them fighting like regular ass brothers. Cause like, girl, what? But uh, <clears throat> this is from CNN Business. Hey, CNN said Monday that it will evaluate new information that sheds light on how anchor Chris Cuomo sought to help his brother, former New York governor, Andrew Cuomo, amid a flurry of sexual misconduct allegations earlier this year. The new information, which include, included a cache of new documents and transcripts of interviews with investigators, was released Monday by the Office of New York Attorney General Letitia James, uh oh, she gonna get you, which led the investigation into allegations against the governor. The, govern, the documents indicated that the scope of how the anchor aimed to help his brother was more considerable and that he was more intimately involved than previously known, prompting CNN to initiate a review of the material. The thousands of pages of a thousands of pages of additional transcripts and, and, and exhibits that were released today by the New York Attorney General deserve a thorough review and consideration, CNN said in a statement. We will be having conversations and <laughs> seeking additional clarity about their significance as they relate to CNN over the next several days. It was first revealed in May. It is November, you guys. It was first revealed in May that Chris Cuomo had participated in strategy, strategy calls. To, why did I think I was saying that word wrong? To help advise his brother. CNN said at the time that it was inappropriate for him to engage in conversations about his brother's crisis and the anchor will not participate in such conversations going forward. CNN stopped short of issuing a suspension. The documents released Monday included text messages between Chris Cuomo and Melissa DeRosa, a former top aide to Governor Andrew Cuomo, that suggested he was instrumental in working to craft a defense against a flood of sexual misconduct allegations. The text messages also revealed that Chris Cuomo sought to use his connections in the press to help prepare the then governor's team as accusers started to make their stories public. Can you check your sources? DeRosa asked on March 7th. On it, Chris Cuomo replied. Chris Cuomo also acknowledged to investigators that he did attempt to learn more about a story by journalist Ronan Farrow. The anchor defended the practice as conventional. Mm -hmm. The idea of one reporter calling another to find out about what's coming down the pipe is completely business as usual, he said. When Andrew Cuomo resigned as governor in August, Chris Cuomo told CNN viewers that he was not an advisor 
advisor, but a brother. He acknowledged that he talked with his brother's aides and gave his take until CNN told him to stop doing so in May. The Cuomo primetime anchor also said on the air in August, I never attacked nor encouraged anyone to attack any woman who came forward. I never made calls to the press about my brother's situa- <laughs> situation. Monday's revelations cast some doubt on his statement about his intentions with the press. I would, when asked, I would reach out to sources, other journalists, to see if they had heard of anybody else coming out, Chris Cuomo said during testimony. Chris Cuomo also said under oath what he told CNN viewers earlier this year, that he, quote unquote, never influenced or attempted to control CNN's coverage of my family. During the questioning, he reiterated that sentiment saying, if I had tried to influence any of the reporting at CNN or anywhere else, I guarantee you people would know, and so would a lot of others. In its May statement, CNN had said, Chris has not been involved in CNN's extensive coverage of the allegations against Governor Cuomo on air behind the scenes. The network statement added, in part because as he has said on his show, he could never be objective but also because he also serves as a sounding board for his brother. However, it was inappropriate to engage in conversations that included members of the governor's staff, which Chris acknowledges he will not participate in such conversations going forward. The anchor at the time also took to his show to say that he is, quote unquote, family first and job second, and apologize for how he helped his brother. It will not happen again. It was a mistake because I put my colleagues here who I believe are the best in the business in a bad spot. I never intended for that. I would never intend for that. And I'm sorry for that. While a report on the sexual misconduct allegations against Andrew Cuomo, Cuomo was released in August, James James's office continues with a separate investigation into allegations he misused state resources for the development, production, and promotion of a book he wrote in the pandemic. I'm, I'm sorry, on the pandemic. Rich as a party, a spokesman for Andrew Cuomo called the latest release of transcripts, documents, and vi- videos a manipulated release. New Yorkers are no one's fool. <laughs> and James and her colleagues' obvious misuse of government resources to damage political opponents as is obvious and repugnant as it is, is unethical and illegal. <sighs> <clears throat> that is before it was said. <laughs> that Chris Cuomo is suspended. That was from yesterday. <laughs> As of today, Chris Cuomo is suspended indefinitely. <laughs> indefinitely. And this is the statement. <laughs> The New York Attorney General's office released transcripts and exhibits Monday that shed new light on Chris Cuomo's involvement on in his brother's defense, a CNN spokesperson told The Hollywood Reporter in a statement Tuesday. The documents, which we were not privy to before their public release, raised several questions. When Chris admitted to us that he had offered advice to his brother's staff, he broke our rules and we acknowledged that publicly. But we also appreciated the unique position he was in and understood his need to put family first and job second. However, these documents point to a greater level of involvement in his brother's efforts than we previously knew. As a result, we have suspended Chris indefinitely pending further evaluation. So... That the article that I read previously, that was posted yesterday at 8.21 p.m. This statement came out Uh 15 minutes ago. Oh, hot off the press. I I was like, I saw bloop, bloop, bloop. So I saw CNN's notification. Hey, CNN. And then I saw, um, I have the Apple News app. So that was Mm -hmm. from the Hollywood Reporter. So now, see, the the interview came out yesterday and a lot of people were like, yeah, so this was somebody else. They would have been fired. Mm -hmm. Sir, you cannot be on CNN. You cannot use your position as a anchor on CNN because you know some people that figure out what's going on with your creepy ass brother. You're allegedly creepy ass brother. Let me say allegedly. Allegedly. Let me wrap my bubble in alleged like Les says. Wrap myself in a big bubble of alleged. So the like, I'm sorry, to say suspended indefinitely. Why are y'all not saying he has been fired? It's okay to say you suspended indefinitely sounds like fired to me, but it should be fired. Why didn't you just say he has been fired? Suspended indefinitely is not strong enough for this. 
because one, you can get into spaces, you can figure out next moves and you're still talking to your brother. So you can help him with his case that he's allegedly a fucking creep. You should be fired. That's it. That's it. That's it. And that's all. But I'm sorry. It's like, I just, who, I'm like, what did y'all think was going to happen? And the thing about it is, he is no, is that Al Franken? Who literally quit because he was a creep a few years before he got into Congress. Chris Cuomo, you should have quit. When this came mm. out in May, you should have quit. Because one, you're dead ass wrong. Because you would have been calling for somebody else to quit or be fired wow. if it was somebody else. And you know it. Chris Cuomo, you need to stop. I'm just, I don't know what's going to happen tonight. Because I mean, if he's suspended indefinitely before his show start, because I think, what's his show come on? Nine, 10 o'clock? Because he after done. Wow. <clears throat> Girl. I just, the, the privilege on, I mean, I don't have a problem with him. He became sort of a media darling, you know, during the pandemic, interviewing his brother and their witty banter mm-hmm. and people, you know, kind of liked him before. He's not a bad looking guy, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's white, like aggressively white. Yeah. So everybody liked his stance because he had, he and I think he and his family got COVID. So he's very much like, go get vaccinated, wear your mask, wash your hands, wash your legs, you know, go get your booster. He's very much that because he had COVID. Yeah. And then it's like, everybody knows, and everybody loves the, the, the dynamic to him and Don Lemon, even though, you know, he has missteps. We're not, we're not going to do this and act like he don't. He's a whole white man. I mean, as a human being, there's no way you don't have any missteps. You don't misspeak. You don't look at things wrong. You don't think, you don't talk before you speak. There's no possible way. He's also a big ass white man, a very privileged white man whose brother used to be the governor of New York. There's Mm -hmm. no way. And it's like, oh, sorry, you need to go. So yeah, yeah, he's gone. He's not coming back. And I'm pretty sure everyone's going to expect Don Lemon to speak about this. Why? He didn't come out of his dick. <laughs> that is not his man. That is not his brother. That is, he did not, bur- he, his spunk did not bur- birth Chris Cuomo. But it's going to be funny. Like, oh, what's Don Lemon going to say? Nothing. <laughs> wow. And the bad part about it is you'll expect him to do it. Or expect him to run cover for him because that's what happened when you have a black friend. Your black friend better cover for you. No, I'm not speaking about this because I know I damn sure would not. I'm sorry. You would have, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I cannot. As soon as I finish mopping the ocean with this paintbrush, I will get back to you all my statement. Mm. So sorry. Not sorry. Not sorry, 2004. 2021, not sorry. Not. Yeah, we're not running the cover for white men fucking up. Get his brother. Oh, wait, (laughs) that's right. Can't get his brother. Get somebody else's brother, not Don Lemon. Because Don has got, he's gotten too much equity. He got his (laughs) black equity back. So he ain't trying to fuck this up. But, you know, y'all will be hearing this on a Thursday. So he may have said something by now. I hope not, because Donald, I like you. I feel like you'd be my favorite boozy brunch friend besides Cook. Mm. I feel like us three would have a key. Several keys. Mm. Don't do this. I am hoping that I am wrong and you don't say anything. Or just saying, I have no, or you could just say, get up there with your big brown eyes and go, I have no comment about, no comment about Chris Cuomo. Have a good night. (laughs) I 
I really hope that will be his stance because that's the problem. It's kind of like when you have friends who fuck up publicly like this. Yeah. You're always called. They're like, what do you think? I'm like, girl, can Nothing. I process this? <laughs> Nothing. Already I just like, what, what do you, I'm like, you got to say something. I don't know what it is to say. This is bad. I'm sorry. This, we are in danger. <laughs> it's a crisis. What do you want me to say? It's like, I, I can't say anything because it's all bad. That's it. That's the tweet. That's How about it. that? How's, this, how's that for a statement? So I hope that they don't bring out every black person that's ever been on CNN. Why don't you go get some of the white people? Ask them what they think. Hopefully that's what happens. Y'all are hearing this on a Thursday. Hmm. That's it. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I hope, well, actually, no, I hope I'm right and Don don't say shit. But I have a feeling y'all going to want Don to say something and I'm pretty sure he's going to end up saying something. And I don't want him to. Oh. I don't want Rachel saying nothing evil. I like Rachel. That's my girl. She on the MSNBC because she, she'll probably have an expose by Friday. But, you know. I'm blinking really hard. <laughs> Y'all, that's I my just... girl. Let me tell you something. Rachel be dragging people. It's like, girl, please don't do nothing because Rachel's like, so yeah, on March 12th. Girl, no, leave me alone. God damn it. Please leave us alone. <laughs> Rachel's like, let me tell you something. She has a team of researchers, okay? Mm-hmm. she is like have the <laughs> ultimate boss level of researchers for Rachel Maddow. Mm-hmm. She'll have her expose and I'm like, girl, she won't have it. Solo Dad O'Brien is going to dig in his ass. That's fine. I'll allow it. What's her name? Mm-hmm. Joy Ann Reed. <laughs> Let me tell you something. These black women are going to wreck his ass over the coal and I'm going to be like, you know what? I'll allow and it. And Miss I can't yeah. wait to cross to get a hold of this yeah. because she is my goat. Girl. Oh, she like, this. gather around the children. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when I tell you to be dragging them, like, and for real, for real, it's the authentic, visibly blackness for me mm. um, with her because when she drags, she drags like she's on the corner a little bit. Like, Bro. she's enough and i am here for it because it's true it. when she dragged bill maher I thought, just chef's drag kiss. him Portia. Uh, you can drag her now drag her drag <laughs> drag, <laughs> drag queens do it do it i'm all for it um don not you don't you say uh, a goddamn thing don don't say shit everybody else drag it. his ass Oh, and they better, they, they're going to have to form like Voltron for real, for real. I'm just saying. Do this. And, 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 and now I'm going to go happen. back to, Vol- listen here, oh, Princess Alora, drag his ass. Drag, see, this is what happens when I've been watching Voltron all damn weekend. And the new one is very, very good. Okay? I heard, I heard. And Let me tell you I, something, I'm all about gay Shiro, okay? Gay hot Shiro, he got a whole, he lost a husband and gained a new one, okay? I'm okay. all for it. Did Give you watch Shiro? Um, Super Crooks yet? Wait a minute, who? Super Crooks. No, I haven't seen it yet. Is it good? I liked it. It's cute. Uh-huh. Ooh, uh-huh. Okay, I, I liked it. it. I yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, and also, so really quickly, now mm-hmm. that Fallon has had her baby, does Girl. that mean that si- Simon is vindicated? No. Oh. <laughs> the, the bad part about it is, y'all are all terrible here. Like, Simon, see, he's vindicated. No, the hell he's not. Sir? No, because it, 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 like he made it seem like he was just like I think for real, for real, Fallon was allowed to to fuck around with that young boy. Okay, mm-hmm. she was right. So Especially was when around. Simon was fucking around, I'm like, why are you acting like you didn't file for divorce in January? But she got pregnant mm-hmm. by the young boy, so everybody was like, oh, oh see, so that's so you that's know, why. See, Simon is so, right. Simon is not blah, blah, blah. right to answer the DMs from. Peach juice. Why? He why is wait a minute. So ha, please have you seen the episode? Uh, I have not finished the episode. The thing about okay. it is, it was like, let me tell you something. <laughs> you cannot see and say, I 
I didn't meet Simon until after the divorce, bitch. We saw you on the whole fucking camera. Oh, was, oh okay, okay, okay. Yes, because girl, like, we know girl, you been here. You've been knowing him for a hot second, you girl. You've been knowing so him because him. you said that was your your baby daddy Dennis's friend. So what you mean? <laughs> All I'm gonna say is this. I honestly honestly so like honestly you so stupid <laughs> honestly like honestly, honestly <laughs> wait a minute hold up that is the show title honestly <laughs> honestly like being honest honestly like i don't be mad at portia sometimes now i know she's, I she's special she not the sharpest or the you know whatever the thing about it, it's like i get it but no but i get it. i i i feel like on a at a at a, at a certain level i understand her mm-hmm. and I, said, I, I that's get all it. i'm gonna say I, no no i, I get it so her. the thing about it is it's like <laughs> i enjoy peach i mean i, I, really I couldn't really deal she with is, you know mm-hmm, but girl like hey girl i feel like to an extent Mm-hmm. Um, she's just a city girl with better breeding, and I'm That's here saying. for it. I I'm love here her for and it. her pretty face, and her cute clothes, and her fat ass. I'm all for this. That's okay? it. What I'm not here for is for you to act like we are not our eyes. We don't have eyes. And when I, I don't say have breeding, these two eyes I mean, in my mind. I need a better upbringing. Okay. <laughs> like, Let me tell you something, ma'am. You don't have to do all this. It's like. <laughs> Like, see, he she cheated on um Simon. I'm like, what no, is that? No, I'm really trying to understand. Like, I was, was like, like, I'm like, I why hear you saying. I was like, why the girl saying that Portia's vindicated and you know she not a freak no more? And I was like, well, wait, wait a minute. What does Alan have to do with Portia? (laughs) Because according to Simon, she reached out to me when she heard I got divorced. If y'all my friends, why? Wait, wait, wait. She she reached out to him when he got his divorce. That's not bad either. That's not wrong. No, she. So when he filed, apparently, like he had an Instagram saying that. He like they were separating. According to him, she DM'd him said, "I'm so sorry to hear that." Mm-hmm. That's what? right, uh, <laughs> girl. Uh, I know that. I'm like, you mean, baby? I see the game. Uh, uh, what you not uh, going to uh, do is act like that was very innocent. Listen, Peach it's not juice. about innocence. It's Peach, not about let, innocence. Let me tell you something. Um, it's not about innocence. Fritter. Listen here, <laughs> listen here, Dumpkin. It's like Dumpkin. <laughs> Portia, you don't have Dumpkin. to do all of this. If I'm I was sitting here traveling, that. Dumpkin, if I was sitting Dumpkin. here traveling the world on this man, because he got a whole PJ, he got Rolls Royces mm-hmm. at his house, and he got children in the yard and houses in Nigeria. You think I give a fuck what any of you raggedy bitches say on the Twitter? I would think mm-hmm. nothing. I would tweet and mute. I would ignore y'all. It's so hard to be on social media. You know how it's not hard to do? Delete that shit. Hey. But it's you like, know what? I give a good goddamn, but you I give did. a good goddamn. I got a glimpse of her new show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, girl, what? <laughs> I, see the vi- I see the vision, bitch. I see like, the You're trying to see, I'm not that bad because family got a whole baby, but you literally try to lay the like, we ain't friends, so ain't no girl code, but you spent a whole ain't season. No girl, ain't no girl code. And it's like, ain't no girl code, but it's like, ma'am, you told Kenya, because Kenya says, excuse me, Tanya was licking your box and you fucked that stripper who fucked the melon. It's like, girl, shut the hell up. If you single, why do you care what she say? If I'm single, I don't fuck him that night and that morning and said, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I got to take my plate to my bedroom because I'm about to go fuck him again. See how that works? This is what happens when you single and hoe is life. Mm. If you tell some your your single girlfriends, somebody licking my cooch today. Wait, no, I'm sorry, we're not that kind of friend. Wow, <laughs> let me tell you something. <gasps> <laughs> I'm sorry, but this is Who my says thing. that to their friends. Hey, girl, somebody licking my coochie today. Who are you talking to? <laughs> I don't. Here's the deal. <laughs> what friends are those? <laughs> 
who's that's your that's your single buddy girlfriend that's with benefits that's your girlfriend with benefits if that's what you're saying I and there's really nothing feel, wrong with that i feel like the girls get down i'm just saying and we already know you know what i'm saying ho is life ho is my not thing life. in that particular situation to me the aggressor was Kenya for running her mouth because I was just like at the end of the day. Why are you, you telling girl folks business, bitch? But also, the, here was the thing. She kept saying that her the Kenya was breaking girl code, but you said if y'all not friends, they know girl code. You and Kenya not friends. What the fuck are you? It was like, stop talking. Hola. I know. Hola. You were saying girl codes between friends. It's like, yeah, I'm like, no, girl, don't be telling everybody I'm fucking everybody. I'm like, but here's the thing. If I'm single, and don't care and not trying to get back with my baby daddy and or my supposed friend's African husband that got all the money. Yeah, I'd have it. I was like, yeah, I'd have an issue because I'm like, look, I'm trying to keep Dennis. I don't need him to know that I'm fucking the dude that fuck a melon. Seriously, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with that video. He had the weirdest music and cowboy boots and it was in black and white and infrared and he was fucking a melon. And I'm like, I don't understand why you think this is sexy. Why are you fucking a melon? I thought it was a pumpkin. Everybody's like, it's a melon. I'm like, it looked like a pumpkin to me because I see seeds, but I don't know. It was big as pumpkin seeds, I thought. Why are you I'm- fucking a pumpkin? It's a melon. What the fuck? Why? And then he busted it. And I'm like, so there are these things called uteruses and cervixes. I don't know why you think you busting up and you're like, oh my God, I don't want you anywhere near my cervix, sir. Get away from me. Mm. I'm sorry. But it's like, I get girl code. I'm like, no, is it girl code? Yes. But if you're saying we not friends so I can fuck Simon because me and family not friends, then you need to shut the fuck up and get off Kenya's ass because y'all not friends either. And Miss Delilah Spirit going like, uh-uh, Latoya, you trying to um, coerce the pastor. Here come your buddy Portia. Girl, I don't, ain't none of my business. I, what? Ma'am, wow. you made that part of your storyline, and now you like, um, girl, ain't none of my business. You listen. Okay. <laughs> I said I, I don't. I know y'all fucking lying. Let me just say this: I wouldn't be caught if that was one of my friends. I would not be. Y'all would not hear me call. I'm like, it ain't none of my damn business. But I also am not. Yeah, I know. I probably would be that. I would probably be that um hypocritical too. Like, let me tell you something. Y'all ain't gonna say that about Cook. You shut the fuck up. Mind your business. Ah! Ain't none of my friends. <laughs> if any of my friends hook up with a man that I know is married, what you think? I don't think any. I think that sugar don't go in grits. That's what I think. Hey. <laughs> ain't none of my business. That, uh, and what you're not going to do is talk about my friend. None of my I friends. Think that, I don't um, care. If someone has something to say about the mocha minute, I'm going to let them know. Fish don't fry in the, in the kitchen. Man, These beans like, don't burn on the grill. It's like, that's what they like. Stephanie, you sleep with a married man. I'm sorry, I blocked you. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Tweet and mute, bitch. Tweet and mute. If you want to do the whole is life thing and you try, the thing about it is why make a, a show to make it seem like, oh, you're doing better. I'm like, baby, this is not helping you because your baby daddy going like, this don't make no goddamn sense. Mm. <laughs> He's like, she wouldn't be dating me if I ain't had no money. Um, your first husband can't be Cordell Stewart and think you're going to go down. I know Cordell don't have a whole bunch of money, mm. but he do got money. Mm. He lived a comfortable life. Stop playing with me. I'm sorry. I wouldn't go down either. I mean, I don't blame I'm Portia, I don't blame me. I'm sorry. You, I'm at, I'm used to a certain level and I'm not going down. So guess what? I'm not dealing with no nigga who take me down a level. Excuse me. I'm on level three, two in Sonic two. I'm not going back down to the Green Hill Zone. I'm not doing it. Okay. Mm. <laughs> who? Look here. If I pass them levels, you're not sending me back down to Green Hill. How about, listen... I get it now. No romance without finance. I always love that song. Gotta have a J O B if you wanna be with I me. I always love that song, but now you know when I started paying it bills, makes I was more like, sense oh. when you're adult. You're like, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. no, because that, no. I'm not, de- listen here, you brokey. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> With your broke ass. With your broke ass. Your brokey. <laughs> <laughs> but no like and then you have to you know I, I, I understand you get it you get it I'm like, I understand I get it. I'm like, yeah it's like and for real for anybody I got like they don't understand I can't take them serious. I don't it's think like, no, serious. like, oh, we get boys. You, like, uh, you gotta understand. Because you know too. what's funny? Even her baby daddy came through and was like, oh, what island is Portia on today? Like, yeah, nigga, you oh, know. He got with a nigga like, who had had more like, money um, than me, you. Sir, you not a brokey, so he know. He's like, she wouldn't be with me. I didn't have the money. So you understand the assignment. I understand the assignment. You do. If I want to be with... Portia Peach Juice Big Booty Williams, I better have a coin. If not, she not going to talk to me or look my direction. You understand the assignment. It's like, Portia, you don't have to like, see, I'm going to do this thing so it make me look better. It's 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 not. It's going to actually add more questions. Wait a minute, hold up. Why your sister saying two weeks and you saying a month? You. Why? You. And if Simon is your buddy, how come that, how, if Simon and, and Dennis are allegedly buddies, why is there no bro code? Oh. Because mm-hmm. they got money and they mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. They understand the assignment. Mm. Listen. These juices, what they like. Big bank take little bank. It is what it is. <laughs> if he wanted her back, he going to have to get a bigger bank. Right. And that's that. And she's like, I love him. I'm like, girl, if you mean to tell me you DMing some dude that you don't really know, but you, oh, he's, oh, girl, I'm so sorry. So I guess he didn't, I guess she didn't um, message Fallon and say, girl, I'm so sorry to hear that you getting divorced. Mm -hmm. Anyway, like, listen, girl, look, 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 I'm tired of y'all. Like, why are y'all playing in my face? But at least he separated, you know, like, I mean. Child, she, so when she explained, yeah, I mean, it was supposed to go through and then the picture was going to drop and, oh, it didn't finish. So you you do realize there's this thing um, where you can check to see before you post. You can leave it in the drafts and then take it out to draft and post it. I'm, but I'm... even if it was, it was still through. It's like, Girl, the optics is still going to be bad. I don't understand why you thought the optics still wasn't bad. It, uh, That's the part I'm like, so I hear you. I really do. Because but the thing do you is, I think the optics still aren't bad. We know that she didn't think that really think that through. She did what she needed to do. And then she said, you know what? Let's just go ahead and. Uh, Make She's like, look, I had thing. transformed into Portia Luther King. I can't be no home wrecking hoe. I'm like, oh. um, I will say this. You did. <laughs> you did not. I will like, I will give Portia this. You did not wreck that um house. That house was crumbling already. It was a shack. It was and, a card house. You did not break up the line of marriage, that. but you still look real funny in the light. Yeah, and that's the beginning and the end of it for me. If, right. Like, like, I mean, I just, him up, but she's still raggedy. I'm like, I, I mean, don't care. It is. it is, but the point is, it's like, how good of a friend were they? Were but that's they the thing. She, that's the thing. Portia is saying that they or... were not friends. That's the thing. She keeps saying that. It was like, but you were hanging out. You had your whole coochie in her whole pool. You had Instagram. Oh. You partied with her so now y'all not friends and that makes it but okay that was the thing like no but like yeah you can see people flicking it up and mm-hmm. I, that's what like not, they, was it friends, friends. for the show right. like for like is it mean like yeah you're pretty i'm pretty you hang around you know rich niggas i like rich niggas so mm-hmm. we should hang together. i can't like, wait for Tarina to hear this she'll be like for... what the i missed the kiki i missed the kiki <laughs> Yes, she did. You know, Taria got she got thought she got all them thoughts of peepees because she got receipts. She has because these things called receipts, y'all. Where? Because I like where do she be at? I just be seeing her on Instagram. Let me tell you something. 
Maria, <laughs> I swear she come out the she come out the ceiling. And let me show you this receipt. Like, what the hell did you get this from, ma'am? Are you are you a Cuomo? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, she not. No, she not. No, she not. <laughs> no, she not. She would never. Taria would never. Taria would never. She would right, use her powers for good. Her. She would never do that raggedy hood booger mess. And she would never be a Cuomo. That is just ugh. It's that bad when your name turns into a verb. It's very. She good. would very never get Cuomo off. anything. Mm-hmm. All right. Extremely get to yeah. We are just kicking because I love her and we have fun. <laughs> so y'all, this is, you know, we have a show. This will be out on a Thursday. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. Um, Cook, I love you for real. I fuck yeah. with you the long way, the short way, the diagonal way, the melon way, every way. Not that, not a late night, I'm drunk and we going, somebody going to do this with me way. No, we, we don't love each other that way. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. It's okay, pumpkin. It's okay. So please, if you have an ear, use that ear. If you have fingers, use those fingers to look up highly inappropriate on the SPAN <laughs> network and listen to my girl. Do all to give all the um, non freelance auntie pay that bitch um, gems that she be dropping on her show. It's called highly inappropriate. <laughs> she preaches <laughs> with no pulpit. Okay, she preaches with her microphone. She don't need no pulpit or no gold from like Jamal. Okay, all right. Um, I'm gonna leave Jamal Bryant <laughs> and his gold. <laughs> <laughs> y'all i saw it from my own eyes taria from what else is going on saw it too so oh. we are not being facetious and we're like with a throne and we're like girl what was going it's for jesus jesus don't need no th- i cannot do jamal i cannot it just it's too much i've been telling people i'm like y'all he started in the auditorium of a high school i think he probably started somewhere else before that but the earliest i remember was jamal bryant he started in the high school auditorium mm. And it wasn't, it's not a, it was not a big auditorium, y'all. I, I, and then he moved. He was at the forum. Forum is like a catering hall. He was like in a building behind the forum. And then he moved to, you know, the hill where his church was. And then, you know, stuff went weird. He had an app and now he down in Atlanta. Mm. Yeah. All right. So please subscribe to highly inappropriate also check out my boy spam i gotta have him yes that's my that's my buddy all three of us need to get together yes we do yes we do yeah yes we do yeah yes we do because man be cracking me the heck up because he a fool and (laughs) y'all um as quinn said from know that pod i'm a whole fool i'm like you right yeah he's like this is that because she a whole fool i'm like that is the wildest introduction. That is extremely true. I'm laughing at I'm that. Saying, That's I'm funny. Just saying. I'm just saying. But y'all, this has been Mocha Minutes. Please, please, please listen to Highly Inappropriate. Please, if you feel so inclined, please buy me a coffee. Buymeacoffee.com backslash Mocha Minutes. Um, as Erica De Niro will say, um, take care of your ch- each other and protect your energy. I will be back next week. <clears throat> Bye. Mm. Toodles. Ever notice how conservatives are real big on facts over feelings, but always feel like ignoring the fact? And they'll always ask me when it comes to Kyle Rittenhouse, did I watch the trial? Did I see the videos of that night? Come on, man, did y'all watch the trial? Did y'all watch the videos of that night? I remember it vividly. I remember the drone footage of Kyle Rittenhouse shooting his first victim five times with the kill shot coming to his head and is back on the ground. Y'all got the nerve to call that self-defense. Remember concerned people chasing after an active shooter and he killed a second person. I remember a third person who had a gun chasing after an active shooter and he got shot with his hands up. Remember a biased judge, a broken justice system, and hive-minded individuals calling someone a hero who could damn near be described as a mass shooter. Those are the facts and y'all don't feel like hearing that, do you?